My family house peaked descends from the greatest of the Reach kings, Garth Greenhand, and his daughter Floris the Fox. We were once one of the most powerful dynasties in the land, vying for power against our ancestral enemies, House Manderly. Yet, we have fallen far since then. We supported the Blackfires in their doomed rebellion against the Targaryens. We even rose up against the throne ourselves. A king died trying to storm our castle. As punishment, much of our land was stripped from us. Of the three castles that adorn our coat of arms, only Starpike remains. Even the Valyrian steel sword we once held, Orphan Maker, was taken from us. No more shall House Peak remain relegated to a footnote. I will reclaim our castles, our sword, and our place among the great houses of the Reach. Or I will die trying. Hello Wanderers, welcome to a brand new Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones mod playthrough following House Peak. Now, House Peak, as you may have gotten some hints in the intro, is actually a lot more interesting than some of the other houses in the Game of Thrones lore. There's a lot going on behind the scenes with these guys, even though they don't play an extremely prominent role in the books, they do have a very cool history. So. I'm not going to get too deep into that now. I will leave a link to their wiki page down in the description below if you want to do a little bit of research yourself. But our character here that we are playing as is indeed Lord Titus of Starpike. Now, Lord Titus is just a young man taking over for his from his father who died of an illness, and we are taking over during the time of Robert's Rebellion. So. While we're playing our own game, we will have some events left up to chance here between the Mad King Ares Targaryen and Robert Baratheon, but our story may take place on a little bit of a smaller scale, more focusing here on the reach and the kind of goals that our own character has to accomplish. So before we jump in, to the game itself. As always, we're going to go over our main character, some of the important characters in our court, and then our goals for this playthrough, or at least for this current character here, Lord Titus. So, Lord Titus, what are you? Well, you are a intricate web weaver, so this will be an intrigue-focused playthrough, which will be fun. I haven't done one of those in a little bit of time. So we're going to have some really cool backstabbing and plotting and stuff going on in this one. Uh, we are temperate. So not a terrible trait there. A little nice boost to health. Our stewardship goes up a tiny bit. Uh, it's uh, considered virtuous. So people are going to like us a little bit better. But on the other side, we do have deceitful. So characters will like us a little bit less. I think these two even out. Uh, but we do get that nice little bonus to intrigue and the study the art of scheming decision, which probably is going to come in handy. And we also are ambitious. So we have goals that we want to accomplish and we are going to do everything we can to see those done. We are also a squire. We are the squire to Lord Randall Tarley of the West March. And that is a character who does play a little bit more of a prominent role in the books. Uh, certainly his son, Samuel Tarly, plays a huge role. But we are, go we are essentially his squire. But upon our father's death, we did have to return to Starpike to, you know, take over the lands that we rule over. So we are still a squire. We're 16 years old. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, get down that knighthood path and be knighted, we shall see. This is all different with the Wards and Wardens DLC and all the most recent DLC that have come out, tours and tournaments as well. I have not played with any of these in the Game of Thrones mod, so I'm curious to see how that's all going to factor in here. Uh, obviously, we're Faith of the Seven. We are Marchers, so the, the marches, the Dornish marches here, basically along the the mountains here are going to i mean the the lords here probably have a lot of uh enmity with the the dornish lords i think there was a lot of 
fighting between them, a lot of conflict between them through these mountain passes over the many centuries. So we probably don't really much care for the Dornish people, but we'll see if that plays into the story at all. I'm not entirely sure if it will, but just something to keep in mind for who our character is and and what our culture is like and, and what things are like here in the Reach. Uh, we are currently married. Our wife is a Lady Margot of House Lannister. Indeed, we do have a Lannister wife, which is pretty cool. Uh, that is obviously a very prominent house. And that is in the books as well. Uh, these two characters are mentioned in the books. And so, you know, we are playing a semi, you know, accurate playthrough here. Uh, she's got a little bit of the Lannister stewardship skills, so that's going to end up being fairly helpful to us. Um, she's got the patron of the mother, so fertility opinion. Nice little bonus there. Her traits, uh, impatient, arbitrary, uh, but diligent. So she's kind of an interesting mix here, a character who, uh, you know, probably might get a little exasperating sometimes, but uh, you know, we are pretty similar in age, so hopefully the marriage will go well. We might end up trying to romance her at some point, but I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, you know, we might we might do that immediately. We could try. Uh, you know, I don't see why. Why not? I mean, our character here is has just come of age, has just turned 16, and, you know, we're wed to this young woman. Uh, from a prominent house, perhaps we would try to woo her. Uh, I don't see this as being too strange. Uh, impress her by winning a sparring match. We do have a little bit of sparring skills, so... You know what? And we are young. You know, a young character like us is probably going to want to try to show off, you know? Like, ah, oh, look how strong and skilled of a warrior I am. So let's see if we can pull it off here. I recruit one of my most senior soldiers and practice with him for three days straight. Once he deems me ready, we head together to the main courtyard. As we begin to spar, a crowd gathers, and their cheers soon draw none other than the rowdy Lady Margot. The soldier fights valiantly, but I disarm him with a final flawless thrust. I kneel before Margot and declare my noble intentions. I dedicate this victory to you, my lady, bringing you honor is my only desire. My beauty is speechless, but clearly flattered. Why else would she be smiling thusly? Ah, so maybe she won't... Uh... Maybe she won't be able to resist our charms. To that end, uh, when we are looking to choose our lifestyle, we naturally you would go for the intrigue lifestyle here and start going on this right away. But I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, I would like to go into the intrigue uh, shortly, but and probably down this spy network one because that's a new one with the Game of Thrones mod and the whole spy. Uh, mechanic in the game i have not played around with at all so i would be interesting to interested to go down this route here but i think because we're such a young man you know full of full of uh spit and vinegar we are going to go for the chivalry focus at first because i want to get the stalwart leader perk i think a young 16 year old even if you are a little bit more inclined towards backstabbing and things like that you know you're probably going to be filled with that sense of like all these knights are going out and going out to war. This is a civil war going on right now. That's going to influence our character's decisions a lot is the fact that there's this massive war going on and men are being sent off to fight. We might end up having to lead our own troops to go into this war. So I think that it makes I think it makes sense to go down this route at first. So the chivalry focus, we're probably going to take stalwart leader. Uh, if we get another perk, maybe we'll go for courtship or something like that. And then after that, we'll we'll go back and we'll switch over here to the intrigue lifestyle. So I think this makes a lot of sense. That does give us a nice, a pretty decent amount of we are a fairly skilled. Uh, fighter here so our prowess is 18 i mean we did learn from randall <laughs> tarley who as you can see is one of the most skilled warriors in the in all of westeros right now so we learned from the best and some of that has rubbed off on us 
some of the other important characters will take a, a brief look at our court. We obviously have Lady Margot managing our domain. We have our cousin here, Gilmore Pike, as our Castellan. He's uh, a little arrogant, stubborn, ambitious. Yeah, you know, interesting man for our Castellan, but he does have some pretty good skills, so we'll see if he continues to serve us well. Uh, we have one of our vassals, Lord Herndon of Rutmark here, as our chancellor, uh, forgiving, wrathful, but trusting. Uh, this seems like somebody who we can probably easily push around, so I don't think he's going to have too much influence over us. Uh, Master Andrik, another one of our uh, vassals. I believe he is uh, you know, one of the mayors or masters of one of the towns. Uh, forgiving, honorable, but sadistic. Mm, honorable, but sadistic. Interesting. And forgiving. Interesting uh, mixture of traits that this character has here. Uh, he's serving as our steward currently, but he's not particularly good at his job. Then we have another one of our cousins, I believe the father of Gilmore, indeed the father of Gilmore here, Sir Gedmund Peak. Uh, he's pretty good. He's actually strong. He's a skilled fighter, brave, callous, uh, wrathful, uh, dutiful captain here, and he's probably going to serve us quite well. Our spy master, Alison, uh, just a common commoner woman, paranoid, deceitful, craven. Uh, she doesn't like us very much, and I would probably um, like to sway her over, uh, but we'll do that once we've finished our our romance scheme. And then we have a Septon, of course, Septon Barkin. Um, you know, I don't know if we're going to care much for what the Septon has to say, but he is fickle, deceit, vengeful, and patient. So that's our court. There are just two other characters that we want to take a look at. And these are our channel member tier characters and some pretty important ones and cool ones. Uh, I think you will agree. So here we have our best friend, Carrick Darrowson. Now, the Darrowson family originally actually ruled over the lordship of Middleton. However, uh, and when they when they did rule over that, they did have some conflicts between uh, themselves and House Peak. Uh, I imagine that there may have been some duels fought, some conflicts fought during peacetime, perhaps a started with a tourney bout and ended up with some blood being shed. Either way, House Peak did come out, come out on top and Carrick was sent essentially as a ward or a hostage of House Peak. And during that time, he actually became very loyal to House Peak and ended up becoming good friends with Titus. So he is brave, he's wrathful, and he is humble. He's still 15, so he's just finishing his education. He's a loyal character. He's also a squire, and he is the squire of our cousin and marshal, Gedman Peak. So once he comes of age, we are going to probably make him an acclaimed knight as well, maybe captain of the guard or something like that. Uh, he is betrothed to this beautiful young woman here, Jamila. Uh, she's a honey whiner. And she uh, has been in our court, and I guess they were infatuated with each other. And so a betrothal was arranged between them. So uh, that will be nice for him once that comes of age. Hopefully he doesn't die before, uh, before then, but we shall see. His family, unfortunately, was ousted from the Lordship of Middleton by the Mad King. I imagine they may have just said the wrong thing supported the wrong person. They were ousted from that position. The father uh, was killed, I believe. Uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, Malcolm Darrowson was executed on the orders of the Mad King. They were stripped of their lands. So perhaps we will get an opportunity to give our best friend his castle back, but we shall have to see. The only other character we need to, we need to look at is a Maester Morn, and Maester Morn is from the House of Good Brother, which, as some of you will know, is a house from the Iron Islands, a pretty important one. They do own this uh, big island here, which I totally forget the name of, but they are pretty one of the most prominent houses in the Iron Islands. Uh, this man, he is callous, he is solitary, he is arrogant, so yeah, uh, not a nice guy. 
He's Herculean and a very skilled warrior, but for some reason, he became a maester. Uh, he left those lands behind, he became a maester, and somehow he ended up in our court. He is reclusive, so we barely ever see him. He keeps himself up into his tower. What is he planning on doing? Or what is he getting up to up there? We have no idea, but hopefully he will serve us well. I guess we shall just have to see. But those are pretty much all the important characters. Now, what are our goals for this playthrough? Well, you may have seen it in the intro. Uh, House Peak once owned three castles. That was a Starpike. Dunstanbury, which was the former seat of House Manderley, which is our rivals. You can see that we do have a rival here in Lord Wyman, which is actually pretty terrifying because he's an intricate web weaver. And because he is our rival, he may try to start an assassination plot against us. So we're going to need to be extra careful and we're probably going to need to shell out some money to get like a sworn shield or a cupbearer if we could. I don't think we can. So we're going to need to watch out for her being assassinated. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. But anyways, Dunstanbury was one of our three castles. And the other castle was White Grove. So these three castles here once all belonged to House Peak, but they were stripped from us. And now we only have Starpike. So we do have claims here on White Grove and on Dunstanbury. We're going to try to get those back if we can, but we will we will have to see how how that plays out. I think Dunstanbury is going to be the easier one at first because White Grove is held under Orchard Way. House Fozzy Way is the master of those lands now, uh, but Dunstanbury is has no uh, overlord. Their main overlord here is Lord Paramount Mace. So we have a potential of going after them. Um, even though there's a war going on, which may offer us a little bit more leeway ab again, about acting against our fellow vassals, we're probably going to need to be a little bit uh, careful. It doesn't make sense that we would just willy-nilly go to war and taking these lands back. So what I would like to do is I'm probably going to try to find secrets in Dunstanbury. And if we can maybe like expose a secret or something from Lord Bradwell here, that might give us a little bit more leeway by Lord Mace here, should we choose to take our castle back. Now he's got a few troops, we've got a few troops, but we don't have to worry about that right away because we, we're not going to be attacking him right away. But we will, we will be going for it eventually. Uh, we can potentially get ourselves an alliance by marrying our aunt off. Uh, we're, we could marry her to Lord Dunstanbury, but we're not going to do that. We don't want an alliance with somebody who we're going to try to take down. I would like to try to find somebody who is maybe of a similar age to her uh, and is also a reach man because that's close by, like Lucas of Hartsmere. Hartsmere is just to the north of Dunstanbury, so that actually works out. Not too bad if we want to do a little like pincer movement type thing here. He doesn't have a ton of troops, but I think that this marriage makes a lot of sense. We aren't going to be doing a lot of just like, you know, we're not going to marry some random, you know, hill clansman in the north or anything like that, even though it's technically possible. We're going to try to keep our marriages within the region if we can. We're going to play it realistically. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Uh, is there anything else we need to go over? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we also have a claim on a sword, and that is the Sword uh, Orphan Maker. Now, House Roxton was the original house uh, who held Orphan Maker, but House Peak did hold this sword for a long time. Now it's ended up back in the hands of uh, House Roxton here, in the hands of this young man, John Roxton, who I believe appears in the books, but the the sword, we have a claim on this sword, and I would like to take it back, so we could probably start a, a scheme against him. We got an 83% chance of being successful. It's going to take four years, so I think we're going to start the scheme now, uh, but yeah, we want to take this sword back because, you know, we have just as much claim to it 
as how Roxton does. So we're going to try to get the, the sword back if we can here. So there we go. That's going to take a little while, but we do have a chance. House Roxton is uh, down here, as you can see, uh, just near Old Town. So we'll do our best to get the sword back. We're going to do our best to get our castles back and re get back into power in the Reach. But I think that is everything we need to, to go over here. We can probably start time going. I'm going to start time going kind of slow. I just want to double check. We've got our Castell in here overseeing our realm. That's going to give us that nice little monthly martial lifestyle experience, which is nice. There we go. We get this alliance that we were looking for there. And we have our chancellor doing foreign affairs. That's fine. Steward making us money. Uh, let's see. What is our... Hmm. You know, we don't need the troops right now. So I want to get my commander to be training commander. He's pretty good at that. So hopefully he'll be able to to take care of that, and that should be good. The life and duties of a squire. Lord Randall of the Westmarch tells me that a good knight can identify any man by the heraldry on his shield. He's been teaching me heraldry here and there, whether in the wild or while we're at a castle. If there is a sigil somewhere, he is quizzing me. Today he sits me down to ask me the name, uh, to name these houses, uh, the, that these three sigils belong to. A field of black nightingales on yellow, a striding huntsman in red, and a red fox in a circle of blue flowers on ermine. Uh, let's see if I can actually remember this, the answer to this. So the nightingales uh, is obviously going to be Karen. That's not House uh, Florent. A striding huntsman in red on a green field. That's going to be House Tarly. And then a red fox in a circle of blue flowers on Ermine. That's going to be House Florent. So that is the answer there. We get it correct. So, hey, my uh, Game of Thrones knowledge actually played off a little bit there. After inheriting my title and lands, it is clear that I can no longer remain a squire. In order to meet the, meet the demands of social pressure... I should look into becoming a knight as soon as possible. I will command my knight uh, to make me a knight. I mean, I don't know if we can demand this of... Uh, I mean, maybe we will ask him to, to knight us. I will command. Yeah, I think we're going to we're gonna ask Lord Randall to make us a knight. You know, we have been serving as a squire for a few years now. So, yeah, let us... Uh, let us ask him to do so. And we have been knighted here. As you can see, we are now a knight. So that's uh, that's pretty cool here. So some prestige, captain effectiveness, attraction opinion, uh, heavy, heavy cavalry damage, and opinion of knight characters. So this character was knighted and has sworn before the eyes of gods and men to defend those who cannot defend themselves, to protect all women and children, to obey their captains, liege lord, king, to fight bravely and do other such tasks as they are laid upon, however hard or humble or dangerous that they may be. So there we go. We have become a knight. To the implacable Titus, I propose a marriage between my brother, Olivar Blackbar, and your aunt. Oh, this would get us an alliance here with the High Lordship of Black Sound. That's not terrible. He's got some troops here. You know what? I uh, I think this will give it a small alliance, won't it? Uh, either way, we will accept. Uh, doesn't seem like it's given us alliance. Uh, oh well. Uh, we probably probably don't need it anyways, but you know we shall see. We're going to wait until our good friend uh turns sixteen, and then we'll be able to give him uh, some. Some court positions and stuff. I'd probably make him the commander of the household guard. We don't really have too many great options for that right away. But really, we're just waiting for some of these uh, schemes to tick down. And I mean, we'll see how the the war here plays out between the Mad King and Robert Baratheon. Is King's Landing going to burn down to the ground again, as it has in so many playthroughs? We shall see. Maybe the Targaryens will surprise us all and keep power, but, uh, you know, it's usually they don't, but it could be interesting if they do. 
The abandoned sep in the garden in Plenmeller is the only place where it thrives in these dreams. Oh, we found a rare a rare flower for our wife, perhaps. I will brave the runes for you. Oh. Shall we brave the runes for our our dear wife? You know what? Let's do it. And we find an orchid in the runes. We gained some prestige. We we went in there, you know, and and found a flower for our wife. So oh, that's nice. You know, we're romancing her. Things are going well. I mean, we got a 65% chance. Hopefully we'll be able to increase that chance a little bit more. But 65 is not terrible. We got 19 months to, to do so. Doesn't look like we have anybody who's willing to join our scheme, but it doesn't look like we really need anybody to join our scheme to steal the artifact from John Roxton. 83% chance that could go up in the four years that it's going to take to accomplish that. So, oh, looks like we're being, hmm. Ah, I see. We've just put on the, the helmet because we're a knight, but I think that we may, we may switch out of that here, so... Despite our best efforts, oh, my agents have yet to uncover any secrets at Lord Bradwell's court. However, I still believe there's something going on in the shadows. I only need a little more time to determine what it is. If there is anything, we shall find it. Indeed. I think I'm going to take off our helmet here. Uh, so let us, yeah, there we go. No headwear. We don't need a helmet, do we? I don't think so. Uh, I'm curious, are we, are we serving as a knight? Doesn't look like it, but we've got our sword now, so we we might be getting pulled up as one of the the knights of Lord Mace here to fight in one of these battles. So betrothed can marry. Ah, here our our friend has come of age. That's excellent. We will certainly grant you your request to marry Sir Carrick. Oh, he's become a knight as well here. So Sir Carrick, you know me and him, we became knights at practically the same time. I imagine maybe at the exact same time, you know, may we go and take our vows together. And, uh, you know, that is the that is the basis for a strong friendship here. Oh, he's actually gained another trait callous as well. So evil adventurer. Huh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, he's a pretty he's a reasonably skilled fighter. He's a siege engineer, which is awesome. That's always a good one to get. And he's got 20 Marshall, so pretty good. Yeah, you know what? We will let him we'll let him marry the woman of his dreams. And we're probably gonna make him an acclaimed knight as well. So we do have a second position for an acclaimed knight, and we are going to put Carrick in that position. Tactician and Marauder, Tactician and Besieger. I like that. So we're going the Fox of Starpike. No, you know what? The snail we'll call it the snail of Starpike. Because he has a snail on his uh, on his coat of arms here, so the snail of Starpike. Let's create that accolade there. So he is now uh, our acclaimed knight as well. So yeah, not so bad. We can get some successors here. Uh, oh, we do have this guy recruit to court. Now we don't have the money to, but we might be able to get a bring in a successor. Oh, this guy could do both. Yeah, all right. Well, we can't bring him in yet because he's far too expensive here. A bravosi man. Ooh, interesting. But we can't uh we can't get him right now anyway, so. Oh, and can we join this hunt? Ah, we've been invited to a hunt. Uh who is this? This is Oh, Lord Garth Tyrell. Interesting. A Tyrell is invited to this hunt. You know what? Let's uh let's go to it. We do need a caravan master. Um, should we get Ellen Risley, our grandmother? No. Jamila. That's ten. I mean, Carrick probably will do actually a pretty fine job of of managing the caravan here. Uh, there's some danger in the forest here, but I don't really want to spend. Uh, we could probably afford a forest guide, couldn't we? Yeah, all right. So we'll, we'll uh, get a guide to, to help us uh, reach those lands. Oops. Let's uh, do that again here. Forest guide. 
And that should be that should be everything we need. It's gonna cost us seven, but uh, I think that should be fine. There's no woman lovelier than Lady Margot in her presence. My words often fail me. None of my compliments ever do her justice. Perhaps a carefully drafted poem would better capture her virtues. I will write about her endless wisdom, burning faith, youthful vigor. You know what? We could try. She doesn't seem particularly faithful. Her wisdom is not high, but her youthful vigor. You know what? Let's try it. All right, we're going to go out on this hunt. Local hero. As we traverse the wilderness, trudging through the dirt, we encounter a modest wayward shrine. Naively carved, it sports a seven-pointed star at its head, and below, the weathered words. Here lies Saint Byron of Orchard Way, blessed son of White Grove. Ah, interesting. It's one of the one of the men who, uh, I mean, Saint Byron of Orchard Way. It seems a local spiritual figure. I wonder because we actually ruled in White Grove. Here, I'm just I'm just ad libbing this right now, but because our family actually ruled White Grove at one point, perhaps Saint By Byron was actually a member of House Peak. I think that that might uh, that might be true. Uh, let's see, cast down this, <laughs> no, we are going to say, uh, we're going to say St. Byron has a nice ring to it. Yeah, I think he is a member of House Peak. I've seen the world and beheld its many wonders in my travels, but never have beheld such beauties as the one I have sen seen in Gren Orchard. Truly, rich men women are a cut above the rest. One particularly fascinating specimen has taken my eye of late, a peasant woman by the name of Larissa. Um... A pretty little firebrand. She is far too pleasing to my eye to spend her days slaving away in Grand Orchard. Um, she doesn't seem, you know, she's not beautiful or anything like that. Um, alas, I cannot give my love so freely. Uh, hmm. I mean, we are young. Perhaps, perhaps we would bring her along and just hire her as our, uh, Hire her as our washerwoman or something like that. And perhaps, uh, you know, we've already obviously consummated our marriage with our wife. But uh, perhaps we sneak off to, to do something that we shouldn't, you know? As we trek through New Harvest, our caravan has stopped at a clearing bordered by a tree line. I proceed towards the commotion only to find Hannah and Jamila having an irate row. I will have no more of your idis idiocy, you miserable bampet. Hannah stamps her foot in the dirt. You're the one who has whined this entire journey, squealing, are we there yet, at every crossroads, Jamila retorts. Come now, surely you two can make amends, or we don't have the time for your petty squabbling. Uh, you know what, we, let's try to, to, you know, use our diplomacy here, and we actually convince them to settle their di differences. Uh, so that's pretty good. To the fearless Lord Titus, your masculinity is what gives meaning to my life. I wish only to be by your side, that I may know the depths of your love. Please be the Elena, uh, Elena to my Duran. Signed, Lady Marga. She must have liked my poem. Ooh, so that things are going well. Uh, charms, so scheme success chance has increased here. Uh, what is our scheme success hand? 75%, so pretty good, actually. An imposing man is standing on the road ahead of us. I am Waldemar of Rosewood. I have bested dozens of men in combat, and honestly, all of those fights were dull. So here I am on this road looking for someone better than me, someone I can learn from. If you can best me in combat, I will become a valuable and loyal servant. And so on this night, I demand to meet one of you in a fair fight. Who is this man here? Waldemar... Skilled warrior. Oh, very skilled warrior. Legendary blade master. Ooh, okay, okay. I've, uh, uh, hmm. He might be less valuable after a win. Oh, you know, we might not be able to, to beat him. 36% Genman. You know, Gedman could try, but I think that we are going to try ourselves against this knight here. So let's see if we can be successful. Oh, he won the fight. Uh, so he didn't join us, but uh, that is that's fine, I suppose. He was a legendary, legendary blade master. He won't uh, won't join our court either. So. 
tis sad, but at least we, you know, we tried. We got, we may have gotten ourselves thrashed a little bit along the way, though. As we await the arrival of the guests. Ah, oh, okay, so we've arrived at the hunt. Gorman assembles the party. The local gamekeepers have scoured the vicinity for tracks. Uh, there's no sign of a buck in the area. There are plenty of hares. Uh, okay, so we're going hunting for, hunting for hares. That's fine. Who else do we have here? Uh, Master Parman. We've got Lord Philip of House Watford. Uh, who else do we got here? Lord Bennis of Orchard Way. So we've got his Fawn falls away here. Uh, can we see? Oh, you can see the guest list here. So yeah, we've got, oh, Lord Layton of Old Town's here. Yeah, okay. So there's some pretty important lords here, as you can see. Yeah, Tumbleton, Black Sound, Cockleswent, Orchard Way, Heartland Heights, Blueburn. Yeah, pretty important lords have uh, made their way here. We follow our quarry into the flatland, slowly but surely gaining on the swift hair. It suddenly spooks, hurtling away in the direction as I move towards what's scared. I can scarcely believe my eyes. Lord Bennis and Lord Bradwell entangled on the ground in passionate embrace. Lord Bennis and Lord... Oh, 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 oh. This, uh, this works out so good. So these two here uh, seem to be engaging in a bit of a dalliance, which, uh, dare I say, is probably not looked upon very well in uh in westeros i can imagine these two are our enemies obviously he holds a castle that we want and lord bennis of orchard way is also the lord over white grove here so another castle we want so we suddenly gain some interesting information on two lords who are our enemies Back away slowly, I saw nothing. No, this is a disgrace. Cease at once. We expose Lord Bradwell's lover secret. Yeah, okay. You know what? Let's expose this secret because now that this ex secret is exposed, yeah, okay, so look at this. <laughs> this just works out so well, right? This gives us a lot more ability to act against these two lords. Now, obviously, you know, um, there's not really anything wrong with what they're doing, but the he, the fact is in Westeros, being a sodomite and an adulterer, not, uh, not good. So suddenly we have a lot of reason to be able to act against these two lords here. So this hunt, going to this hunt actually was a pretty good idea. My acquaintance, Lord Parman, is the first to spot its bounding legs. The quick jack is hard to distinguish. Uh, we still want to try to catch this. You know what? I'm going to go and, you know, I, we don't need recreation. Do we want to try to slay the beast? You just want a good hunt and be the one who brings down the quarry. You know what? Let's try to slay the beast ourselves here. So let's go. Leighton found the track. Success chance increases slightly. 50-50. Let's see if we can uh, keep that up. Ah, uh, the damn thing is gone, unfortunately. So the hunt fails. That's unfortunate. But uh, it wasn't a complete loss, that's for sure. Let's leave this adventure behind for now. So finish the hunt. We gain the trait hunter. But we get something even more important here. I notice that Purse avoids me more than usual. He always sits at the opposite end of the table when we're invited to a feast and consistently refuses my company while camping. We may not have the best of relationships, but that attitude is starting to tire me as when I overhear him defaming me. Titus is an abhorrent ogre. I'd be a way better lord than him. Ooh, Caravan Master, take care of it. Yeah, you know what? Let's have Carrick, our our best friend, uh, deal with this man. So, Car Purse wins the fight and leaves. Ooh, so actually Purse managed to... Uh, Managed to defeat Carrick, unfortunately, for Carrick here. Uh, and he left the entourage, though. So that is unfortunate. But in any case, <laughs> chivalry is alive. While traveling through Arden's Hills, we run into some Reachman knights. They are deeply respectful and apparently huge lovers of poetry, as they insist on reciting it every chance they get. The code of conduct they follow has several merits, and I can't help but admire it. One of the knights, Sanyard, is particularly impressive. 
I'd love to take this tradition home. I should try to be more personally chivalrous. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try to be more a more chivalrous knight. So we have returned home here. And, and yeah, that hunt led to some interesting opportunities, dare I say. Now, we will be expanding upon those interesting opportunities in the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But until the next time, see you then.